On evening, summer 1973, a father and his four-year-old daughter enter a chess club in Budapest. They are all folks gathered and playing chess against each other. The father approaches them and tells them, I bet everything you want that my kid will defeat anyone here. Of course, they do not believe and start sitting one after the other with the girl to play against her. By the way, she's not tall enough to look at the chess pieces on the table, but the father has within his hand a pillow and the girl sits on it. They are all defeated by the four years old child, one after the other. It seems unbelievable. Who the hell is this kid? The father is no one but Laszlo Polgar, a Hungarian who devoted his entire life to prove one simple but controversial truth. A genius is not born, but is educated and trained. When a child is born healthy, he is a potential genius. Simply put, geniuses are not born, they are made. And Laszlo proved it. The four years old girl is his firstborn, Suzanne. Indeed, he raised three geniuses, grandmasters in chess. He raised three little girls to become world chess champions. He did that without extraordinary means, in a humble house, but full of chess books. The book Bring Up Geniuses is a question-answer book where he discusses his view. And I think that even if we do not want to do things exactly the way he did them, we can learn from his experience. But no rush. Let's start with the beginning. Laszlo Porgar, born in 1946, wrote some weird letters to a woman, a Ukrainian teacher, not to tell her about love, but about his fat on education and his will to prove his theories. But as he could not have children alone, he will need a woman to conceive them. Clara, the woman, would later write, When I first met him in 1965 in Budapest, I only listened and listened to him. I had the feeling that he was a fantasist who was full of ideas one could only half believe. I did not believe that I could ever become his wife. Afterward, we corresponded a great deal. We sent each other wonderful letters. At the start, they were not much about love. We exchanged opinions about pedagogical ideas. Two years later, after the first meeting, love intervened, as it always does. They got married and gave birth to their first daughter, Susan. Laszlo made her stop school after kindergarten and began her chess specialization. At that age, she already had a good grasp of second grade math. In the beginning, Laszlo projected a couple of early specialization fields, but he discovered that at age 4, Suzanne showed some interest in chess, which was by the way one of his projections. Six months after her specialization started, Suzanne won her first chess tournament in Budapest for girls under 11 with a score of 10 to 0. At the age of 12, in 1981, she won the World Under 16 Girls Championship at only 16 and became the top rated female chess player in the world. In 1991, age 22, she was titled Chess Grandmaster being the third world female to have this title. The performance of Sophia, her younger sister born two years later was more striking. She defeated numerous chess grandmasters aged 14 and her performance was recognized as one of the greatest in history. The last of the siblings is by far the greatest chess prodigy of the family. Even if she was the less talented, her name is Judith. She beats her father at age 5 and is considered the strongest female chess player of all time. She achieved the title of chess grandmaster at the age of 15 years and 4 months, at the time the youngest to have done so, breaking the record previously held by the former world champion Bobby Fischer.
Now let's dive into the 7 takeaways I got reading the book Bring Up Geniuses by Laszlo. First, early specialization. A pivotal point in the pedagogy of raising geniuses for Laszlo is early specialization. Parents ask in what they should specialize the children. For Laszlo, parents do not have to find and uncover the talents of the children. What they should try to do is to find the right psychological frame to develop their talents. They should choose a specific field at their discretion soon at the age of 3 to 4. It can be chess, music, drawing, bridge, languages. The daughters of Laszlo, for example, specialized in the chess field, which means that by 4 to 5, they were playing chess 5 to 6 hours a day. It's indeed more about learning how to learn than actually learning. This requires, however, that the parent or the professional devotes a good deal of time to it. Indeed, the teaching of emotional and moral values is just as important in the education of geniuses as their specialization, says Laszlo. That's why it's necessary to prepare. Contrary to what one might think, this doesn't give the child a single facet. Specializing the child gives him a purpose in his education, which many of us lack even at an adult age. Moreover, the other facets of the personality are not abandoned. In fact, besides being grandmasters, the Volga sisters have excellent skills in many other areas like tennis playing, they speak seven different languages, they are really good at swimming as well. The second takeaway is awaking strong interest. In specializing young children, parents need to develop a strong interest in what they're doing. When children are interested, the work becomes easier and less tiring. It's important to be able to praise the children, to reinforce their desire to do more, and thus to achieve more. However, too much praise can make a child overconfident. External evaluation like praise, corrections, must be balanced with the child's true internal abilities, giving him a true vision of who he really is. Victories play an important role. For example, Laszlo will sometimes let his children win at the beginning of their specialization if they had several failures in a row. Here are his exact words. The more successful children are at one task, the less time they need to complete subsequent tasks. Third takeaway, serious playing. Playing is crucial for children, but not play as we conceive it. Play is not what someone does when he does not want to work. The play has to be fun and also serious, full of learning. By playing, children must develop the abilities to solve problems. For Laszlo, play is useless when devoid of any learning. The fourth takeaway from the book of Laszlo is intensive learning. Even when children are very young, intensive learning has to be disseminated in every field. Indeed, just like body parts are strengthened with a constant workout, so is the intellect. Constant and persistent work on the brain abilities expands them. And we know that children's brain is more open to this path at the age of 1 to 6 when they are young. The fifth takeaway from Laszlo Polgar's book is discipline. Discipline is determining in pedagogy, but not blind discipline is the discipline that allows one to live fully one's work and enjoy life. The famous actor, theme maker and composer Charlie Chaplin will say, talent is nothing, discipline is everything. In early childhood, one must integrate discipline in practice sessions. It has an important role in the development of the children's abilities. That's why specialization is good when young. Researchers showed that 50% of our brain is formed in the first four to five years of life and that a child's extraordinary capability to understand declines with time. Aristotle puts it better. We are wiser when older, but we learn more easily when younger.
six takeaway foreign languages an important ability that children can learn when they are in early childhood is foreign languages it enriches the child's personality and enables him to speak more rapidly more spontaneously and appropriately Michael's Dick will say that at the age of four to six, a child's vocal apparatus is still developing, is elastic and flexible, and is only fixed after the tenth year of life. It means that children tend to develop often better their pronunciation skills than their teachers if they often listen to sound recordings or can interact with native children of the language they are learning. Laszlo's daughters attended a Russian kindergarten and therefore learned to speak Russian even if they were in Hungary. 7. Love Atmosphere Geniuses are a unification of quantity and quality. They have to familiarize themselves with the concept of serving others, whether it is in sciences or other useful areas. Family plays an essential role in this. Indeed, the family is the first place where love nurtures the soul of the child. Thus, the parent must develop a privileged relationship with his son or daughter, cueing the toddler to consistently look for imitating him or her. And the stories of extraordinary people show that they have been nourished by a parent or a tutor or a person who conscientiously devoted himself to create a unique relationship between him and the child and taught him through his own attitude. Socrates sent back to his father a young man who had been registered to study with him. Asked why he did this, Socrates answered, because he did not love me enough. When parents and children develop a unique love relationship, the way is free for learning. These are the core insights I got from reading Bring Up Geniuses by Laszlo Polgar. When I first ended the reading of the book some years ago, I thought of using it myself. But later, other books showed me that early socialization is not necessarily the best way to raise geniuses. However, I truly believe that the experience of Laszlo daughters is a model and that we can all take pieces of fat for ourselves. The best for me being geniuses are not born, geniuses are made.